that is Laura. This is Kyle. And this is He Said, She Said. Laura, it's been a couple of weeks. How's it going? Excellent, excellent. So we have a little, uh, we have a request tonight from a, from a viewer. And her name is Alicia. And she asks this question. She goes, I've been watching your videos on dating. And I'm really interested. And I'm getting back into the dating scene after a couple of years. And I'm curious as to your opinion on gender roles in relationships, particularly with initiating and leading. I'm torn between old-fashioned, where a man asks the girl out, initiates the relationship, and modern times, where women can ask men out. I struggle with this because I do want a man who is confident enough to lead, but when people say, just wait for it to happen, wait for him to call you, it puts me in a passive, inactive role of waiting, which is totally against my nature. I'm a doer and a go-getter, but I also know that I don't want to be too pushy when it comes to dating. Any advice that you can have would be greatly appreciated, Alicia. Wow, I have a lot of thoughts for Alicia because I happen to be one of those, in case any of you haven't noticed, I am one of the more assertive, comfortable in her own skin, like to take control kind of gals. However, Alicia, as you're getting back into the dating um, world and the world of looking for and seeking out your new relationship, what I hear you also saying is that you want someone who can take the lead. And that's a very masculine and appealing thing. I too like that. I like someone who knows when to let me be in control but just as equally knows when to take charge and to, um, and to lead. So I really think, and we can, we'll, I'm sure we are going to spend a few minutes now discussing different parts of this, but I think that it's important, especially at the beginning of a new interaction with a potential, with a date, whatever, new relationship, um, it's important to be an observer and to see just how he does look at taking the initiative and taking control and whether he does or whether he does not because being an observer lets you to see how someone is really um, choosing to act not reacting to what you're doing but choosing to act I think this is kinda of where feminism backfires right because it confuses <laughs> a lot of people i.e. women and men for that matter because the problem with being assertive, and I'm going to use Alicia's example here. She's a woman, and she she's she wants to, you know, know whether or not she should kind of take the the active leader role. Is you've got another person in the relationship, and to your point, you don't know how that guy is going to react. Okay, he could have grown up and been raised in a very traditional household with very traditional gender roles where you know the man leads and, and, and you know and the wife follows and coming on strong like that and just kind of taking the bull by the horns has the tendency to scare those guys away okay I think that I'm from the south I can tell you it scares those guys away <laughs> however I think that your advice to her initially was spot on, okay? You got to kind of pulse check. So if you're interested in a guy, right, and you don't feel that he's pushing down the gas fast enough, right, you, you would like to go out with him, you would like it to continue, whatever. A couple of things that I think you have to consider, and your point was well taken. You got to observe the situation. What types of keywords does he use? Does it get the? Uh, does he come across as someone who, you know, for example, you know, refuses to let you pay on the first date, or he refuses to even consider not opening the car door, or you know, does he come across in those gender? traditional gender type roles where you know he, he understands his place in this new relationship dynamic a guy like that maybe you have to sit back and wait you know or maybe you, you only come on at 50 percent as of you know as opposed to trying to hit it out of the ballpark so i think observation is a very good place to start because you're going to have to get the lay of the land in the person that you're with now if she's in new york city 
I think it's probably a different situation. If she's in the South or maybe in the Midwest, I think that she once again has a different dynamic and she's going to get a different kind of guy than someone that she might find in on the West Coast or in the Northeast. I like a man to be masculine. I like a man to be a man. I know that I am a an assertive, strong, confident, and self-sufficient woman. I'm opinionated. I'm verbose. And I can be a handful. However, I want a man to be a man. And I want him to be a masculine man. And unless I allow him to do that, he won't. And I think sometimes we, women like me, perhaps like Alicia, we get ourselves into situations where we want to be go-getters. So we go, go, go. We take the initiative. We may get what we want because maybe he is interested. But we run the risk of later on saying, why isn't he more masculine? Why isn't he more take charge? Because we did it for him. We never gave him an opportunity. I also think it's important to let men know what you like. I, I'm not a big into this mind reading thing. I don't, I don't like it. I was never really good at it, and so it makes me completely uncomfortable. And therefore, I'm, I'm very upfront. I will be upfront with someone that I am, you know, oftentimes I, I'll be with someone and they will say, as Drew did, you're a very strong girl. And I will say, yes, I am. I am a very strong girl. But I want you to be stronger. And I think that we also have to let men know if, if we can be a bit like that, um, that we give them permission to be the man. And, I, and I, I think men like that. I think they want to be the man. So, once again, I think your point was straight on where you've got to have, have those conversations. Where I, I think that, you know, you ask the guy, you know, if I asked you out, what would you think about that? You know, if I wanted to take you to dinner, how would you feel about that? Those are conversations that when I was dating, Laura, I never had those conversations. Women never asked that. I don't know whether I attracted just the woman who was looking for the more traditional guy or what, but I never had those situations. So I can't really say what I would do in that event. That being said, I think that she can have, she can have it, <clears throat> she can deck it up in such a way that She's not going to offend the guy and that she, she's going to know the kind of terrain that she's dealing with. And if she asks those types of questions and he gets offended, then there you go. You know, there's no sense in going on with the conversation or going on with seeing each other or whatever, because he's never going to be a guy who's going to feel comfortable with a strong woman at all. I think it's important for women to enjoy being women. If if they do actually enjoy being the woman. And I, and I think I say that a lot because I think, I think we forget about that. I think we forget, uh, especially, you know, I'm up in the Northeast, you're down South and I'm up in the Northeast, you know? And so it is a different, uh, there's a different, um, I think there might be a different feminine vibe sure, a sure. little bit um, based on some geography, but I think there are some things that hold true no matter what. And that is the more feminine a woman is, the more masculine a man will be. I think that, that they encourage, that, that, that energy encourages each other. Let me, let me, I think, I, I want to say this because I think you're spot on. I don't know if it encourages it as much as it gives him license to do it. You gives him license and I think it, I, I, I think both. I, I really do think both. I think it li gives him license, but I also think that it, it becomes there becomes an attraction there also based on it. I th because I think men want to be men and I think women want to be women. But I think that when, especially again, I'll say like in the Northeast and this whole breaking ceilings and leaning in and all this crap that's going on. And I shouldn't say that all this crap because I'm kind of one of those. But above all else, I, I love being a woman and I know that that is the key to allowing someone I'm with to be the man. And I don't forget that. It doesn't mean that I have to be weak, which is, I think, something that women um, 
I think women feel like if they can't be assertive, then they're weak. And I, and I don't get that because I don't agree with it. I, I think that there's a stigma attached to assertive women. Mm. I think this stigma, and maybe many things, but you know, from my experience, I think the, a stigma of an assertive woman is first, she's a bitch. Yeah, right. She's going to be okay. a bitch. And then secondly, she is easy. A, a, an assertive woman, especially at the beginning of a relationship, is easy. She's desperate. She, you know, it, it, far too many guys look upon that as someone that, you know, she's a, she's, she's desperate. She, she really. She's just going to go out and take what she wants. Well, I mean, well, from a desperate point of view though, because she can't get anything else. Right. Or, you know, or, or she's, she's psycho. Something that, that, that can be helpful for Alicia is that you can be engaging without being pushy. Right. There, there's ways to be engaging with someone, I call it flirting, um, without being pushy and without having to ask someone out. And again, I'll go back into the, be the observer, you know, if what you want is the man to take charge and you have to give him an opportunity to do it. If he does it, if he's given the opportunity to do it and he doesn't, then you have to wonder if he's really that kind of take charge kind of guy. And maybe he's not. I, well, I, I think you're spot on. And, you know, in Alicia's point, you know, she said she wanted to get, she wants a confident man, right? But she doesn't want to be the girl who sits and waits for the phone to ring. Right. You know, if, you know, if, if Alicia meets a guy and she, there's an interest there and, you know, she believes he has an interest as well. And if a, a decent, you know, an adequate amount of time goes by and he doesn't take action, that's a sign. That's a sign. Maybe he's not as interested as she thought he was. Maybe he didn't read the signals the first time, which means he probably is not very sensitive and very intuitive. You know, text messaging has completely changed the entire dynamic of first time courtship, right? Because while you may have his phone number, he hasn't called yet. It's very easy to send a quick little text. How's it going? And you continue to save face. So if he never responds, you might feel hurt for a minute and then you move on with your life. It wasn't like that 25 years ago when all you had was a rotary phone and a answering machine. Absolutely. The key is for someone like Alicia not to go down that um, obsessive texting and now making it her why isn't he responding? Why isn't he asking me out? Why isn't he? Because it's a bad road to go down. It's a bad road. I've seen it a million times. We, we met. We had chemistry. I don't understand. I don't understand why he didn't. He said he would call and he didn't. It's the age old didn't. problem. What? It's the age old problem. Uh, one little hey, how are you text. Great. No response, move, move on. on. Move on. Fine. You're absolutely right. Because here's what will happen. He'll keep your phone number, and eventually, when things don't go his way with whatever he's got going on, he'll call you up again. Because, I mean, here's the deal, right? It goes back to things that we've talked about before, Laura. If you have a high character in your dating relationships, right, are you going to be out? meeting other women when you've got something already going on? Are you or are you not? Okay, I think the answer to that obviously is no. So if she meets a guy that she feels like she connects with him, they exchange phone numbers, several days later he doesn't respond, she's asking herself the questions you just asked, all right? She shoots out a little text to him saying, hey, how's it going? And he either doesn't respond at all or he kind of gives you one of those blow-off responses, right? And we're all familiar with what, you know, those things can look like. At that point, I think that's a sign of the guy's character. And I'm telling you, most of us just don't pay enough attention to that. We find it out later on, but we don't pay enough attention to it in the beginning. Here's the thing, ladies. You don't have to chase someone down. That's not how good relationships well, well, begin. <laughs> well, let me state this, though. You can't expect him to chase you down either. Excuse me, why not? Really? 
Really? It does not work both ways, Laura. You can't, on the one hand, want the traditional man who's going to chase her all over the world to try to get her, but then on the other hand, not expect to do some chasing too. It doesn't work that way anymore. But wait, we're talking about two different, I'm talking about chasing, not, not, I'm talking about you send three, four, five texts and you still are continuing to hope that he's going to respond. Ladies, you don't have to that's do that. That's not chasing, that's stalking. <laughs> At the beginning, it's chasing. No, it's not. It's stalking. <laughs> I'm sorry. If if, if 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 you text me three times and I don't respond to any of them, you're stalking me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, perhaps. I think there might be. Yeah, there there might be a need to define yeah. that. I believe this with every assertive ounce of my being. Men need to take the initiative in a new relationship. I'm happy to engage. I'm happy to respond. I will always respond. But I do think if a man wants, you know, wants something, wants a woman, wants to take you out, he needs to, he needs to initiate. Agreed. I, I think that if that's what the woman's looking for. So in Alicia's case, if you want a man to walk through the door, you got to crack it open first. You gotta give him. You gotta give him at least enough heads up that hey, if if you pursue, I'm gonna respond favorably, right? It can't be one of those situations where you just kind of sit back and just wait for something to happen. Guys don't respond that way, right? They're not gonna. They're not going to. You know, they're they're not going to tree. They're not gonna. They're not gonna bark up a tree if there's nothing up there. Okay, they're gonna go somewhere else. Absolutely. And I, and I, and I, and that's where I don't buy into this, you know, wait three texts and then respond, wait four hours after they call, leave you a message and then call them. I, I you know, I don't, I don't buy that bullshit. I, no, I, I just don't. It's immature it's, college it's, age garbage. You know what? We are long past that. I'm not a freshman anymore. I'm an upperclassman in life and I don't do that bullshit anymore. However, man take an initiative, woman respond, engage, give the signal, but I, I, I really think allow the man to be the man, but walk fully in being a powerful woman. I think it can work. I think the energy is there, and I think that's what creates the best kind of attraction. Let's bring this home. What's your final piece of advice for Alicia? Be engaging, girlfriend, but not controlling. Short and sweet. Short and sweet today, yes. I, I'm very verbose. I would say this. <laughs> Alicia, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you taking charge and asking a man out, all right? Yes, you're going to get shot down. Yes, he's going to ignore your phone calls. Yes, you're going to get frustrated at times. However, that's something that men have been dealing with for the last two centuries, okay? With that being said, to your point, Laura, you can be engaging you can show your interest. It's okay to show that hand. For so long, we've lived in this dating environment where, oh, I like him, but I don't want to tell him. I don't want to let him know that I'm interested. Where in the hell did that come from? I know. I you call can the let him know, I'm interested in you. I, you know, I hope that I can see you again kind of thing. That's the type of door crack that a confident man will step through every single time. Absolutely. Alicia, thanks for your note. Laura, been great. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.